You are unresponsive. No pulse. Continue CPR. Sixty-seven. Pressure high. Press the heart. Press the heart. Any breathlessness or any chest pain? How do you feel? Are you worried? Are you scared? No. For nearly 20 years, we have been a community hospital looking after elderly patients who require rehabilitation, patients with long-term chronic illnesses and palliative patients. Almost three months ago, we converted our hospital into a COVID-19 care facility. Good morning. Good morning. May I see your first please? There. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> My name is Chien and I'm a nurse clinician in this hospital for 13 years. We are currently treating COVID-19 patients who are clinically stable. We look after patients who are slightly older, generally 40 years and above. They may have some mild uh, underlying conditions like diabetes or other chronic diseases where they need the care of uh, doctors and nurses all the time. It's not a project where there is a blueprint where for every question, someone has prepared for us the model answers. Staff rose to the challenge. I think they forgot about weekends and public holidays and, and the usual office hours. They just stepped forward and, uh, and they press on. OK, so a few things to update. Huh? First one, huh, Tiger Tags. So my PCA, any PCA here? Since the conversion, my role in the hospital actually remains the same. OK, HA? which is to ensure that my wards run smoothly. Oh, that's why, uh, we were... But now I have to pay more attention to the emotional well-being of those in the wards. Types of waste in bright vision, how many? Some of my staff are still worried about contracting the virus, so I need to constantly check on their emotions. So that means after I squeeze the blood, I wash already, I just say, staff nurse, staff nurse, like this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, you put handy, you put handy plus first, so you don't just like that, staff nurse, I cut myself. <laughs> Many of my patients also verbalise their anxiety to me. Most of them frequently ask when can they return back to work. As a migrant worker myself, definitely I can relate with them. Seeing them uh, being alone and sick is um, very heartbreaking. For example, if it happened to me, I will be here. My family cannot uh, come here to see me, to look after me. So we are going to have our uh, infection control refresher course. We need to comply. After the I'm the infection prevention control nurse of Bright Vision Hospital. Personal protective equipment. So now, can you just... My role as the IPCN is to ensure the safety of my patient and staff. Definitely our patient. One, two, I am do uh, teaching to all my staff, ensuring that they are properly equipped with the infection control knowledge. Four, five. Very good. So that's the all our housekeeping. After converting to COVID facility, it's almost the same, but more challenging because you need to ensure the staff really understand why they need to comply. So, I will be helping you. If you don't really follow the strict infection control, serious things might happen. 
So we need to ensure that the empty beds are cleaned properly before the next patient. So we just discharge the patients uh, here. And now we need to do a terminal cleaning. So terminal cleaning is very important to ensure that the next patient receive with the new and fresh clean environment. Okay. When the call came for BVH to be converted to uh, isolation facility, and I remember this day very clearly, 23rd of March, we understood there was a need to do this. We needed to heed the nation's call to provide a recovering facility so that the beds in the acute hospitals could be freed up to care for critical patients. But at the same time, I knew that this was something very new for our staff. Our staff would be concerned, they would be anxious, and for our patients, that we will have to find an alternative accommodation for them. So it was difficult in this sense, but it was something which we felt that we should step up to this call and contribute in a more direct way to the fight against the coronavirus. At that time, the occupancy was around 70 to 80 percent. And we have some long-term patients who stay here for many years. And within four to five days, we have to find a place to continue the care and make sure that they are safely discharged and stately taken over by the receiving hospitals. It was quite a dramatic scene. Ambulances were piling in. So the moment the last patient left, our ops team had kicked into action. We had to clean the wards, remove some of the beds to ensure that we meet uh, infection control. The team was working round the clock to revise our processes because our entire operating process was meant for a community hospital. nursing to divide the building into three color zones. So red, yellow and green. This zoning is for safety reason. So for red zone is the zone where we house the COVID patient. And for this red zone, staff going in must be wearing full PPE. For yellow zone is a mixture where we have the nursing and also the admin support. And for green zone is clean zone meaning to say there won't be any clinical staff in the clean zone. And Mr. Okay, slowly recovering, so we are happy for you that you can come here. I'm Dr. Gabriel Yee. I'm a senior registrar at Bright Vision Hospital. Uh, and in peacetime, I used to be the hospice lead uh, of our palliative care ward. The biggest change is obviously having to wear the personal protective equipment, having that physical distance with the patients, not being able to give an affirming hug, a warm handshake. These are things that we got to do a lot in family medicine and palliative care in particular to reassure patients who are feeling down. So that was one of the biggest changes to make. But um, we learned to, after a while, to do it through our eyes. Uh, we can actually smile with our eyes. Where is your dormitory? Uh, Tagore Tagore which is in... Chess, okay? No, uh, okay. Okay, it's good. Okay, you take care now, you can keep your medicine later, I come and check your lung, okay? okay. One of the patients who's just been admitted, he had hypertension for about two years prior to him being awarded this time for COVID. But what we can see here on the x-ray is that his heart uh, appears to be enlarged. On. So this is one of the signs that hypertension, high blood pressure, has uh, had some effect on his 
heart and damaged it. But this can be reversed in most cases by uh, treatment of the high blood pressure. Hello? Hello? <laughs> COVID-19 is an illness that strikes terror in all of us. So it's quite understandable that the patient in the recovery stage, they begin to worry about various psycho aspects that would happen to them. And I think our family doctors will be very attuned to such needs of the patient. I think this is where our doctors in Bright Vision Hospital can provide a lot of value to the care of this group of patients. Hello, is that Mr. Abdu? Yes, I am Eunice. I understand you were just uh, admitted to Black Vision uh, Hospital. Do you know why you are transferred to our uh, hospital? Just to uh, check in with you to find out whether you have any uh, concern. I'm the manager of the medical social services. We provide psychosocial support to patients and their families during their stay here. What is it, you know, uh, about how can we help you? Our role is to ensure the well-being of our uh, patients. So we are always uh, check in with them and see how they are doing. So in the case of COVID-19, even though we cannot see the patient face to face, we do keep in touch with them and our role is still the same. So we keep in touch with them via uh, phone calls. They are really not sure what is uh, happening and maybe sometimes also, you know, are anxious about their medical condition. Sometimes they may not know that much about COVID. Also sometimes concerned uh, about their job, their livelihood. So Mr. Rubel, we will continue to take the best care of your wound here lah, for another week. Is that okay? okay. Yeah. The patient I attended to this morning has been with us for about a month. Before he was admitted, he had a bad fall on the way back to the dormitory right after being tested for COVID-19. He sustained a broken leg as well as an abrasion that later became infected. So we've been treating him for all these for the last month. It will take another week or two for it to be fully healed. Only then can we discharge him. Hello, Ben. Good afternoon. How are you today? He sustained a wound and a fracture on his left knee. For the wound is not getting better, it's not healing because of diabetes. So we're trying uh, our best and of course we are monitoring whether the wound will heal and uh, his blood sugar level as well. Once uh, it's resolved, we can plan the discharge for him. 
Go for the best. Thank you. Last night, I wasn't able to sleep, so now my migraine is attacking me. But the good thing is uh, now it's raining, and this rain really helps me to relax, especially when I hear the rain sound. It really helps me to at least lessen the headache. What do I think with COVID-19? Hmm. It's an unknown enemy. It's really an unknown enemy. Now there's a lot of changes because of this unknown enemy. The normal is not normal anymore. It's quite sudden that now we cannot even talk. As in before, you can have a communal dining with your friends. But now because of this situation, we need to ensure that there will be a social distancing. I love traveling and whenever I travel, I love to collect the magnets all over the world. So I have been to Greece, Europe, Finland, USA, Canada and ah, New Zealand here. That's the first country I travel with a lot of snow mountains and the snow keeps and the glaciers is really very beautiful. I lost 30 kg just to meet their maximum weight to do skydiving. <laughs> Crazy, but yes, I did it and it's really very awesome. My last travel was in, where was it? Finland, in last year, 2019, December. From then till now, it's already six months I have not been traveling, so I kind of miss traveling. So hopefully the pandemic gets over soon and I start I get to fly again. How's the food today? Nice. This, uh, this Friday they're going to cook uh, Japanese style curry rice. The first few weeks was really quite quite anxious and quite stressful for all our staff here. Now anxiety has subsided, confidence has grown. I think they look around and they see that the whole community is supporting them. That improves their morale a lot. And there were many people who came to give us support, tokens of like food, snacks, coffee, flowers, whatever it is to say that, you know, keep up the good job and thanks for protecting us. Most of the cases are quite okay, but uh, there are a few that, uh, there are about two gentlemen that we really need to pay particular attention to. We we'll just need to keep a close eye on him, especially his respiratory rate and uh, oxygen saturation, which are some of the first things to go. We had a patient come into Bright Vision yesterday with pneumonia. He's coming into his second week with COVID-19. And that's the period when some patients' conditions tend to deteriorate. We need to continue monitoring him to make sure he doesn't end up in an emergency situation. When such emergencies occur, code blue is activated. And therefore, our staff always need to be properly trained and equipped to react appropriately. Okay, Thank this patient you. is a 49-year-old yes. Indian gentleman yes. who was admitted on the 16th. Mm. Okay, this morning, I think as, as the nurse was going in to take his parameter... Yes. What time did the patient collapse? 14.42, huh? When a code blue alarm bell goes off, everybody who is not attending to current patient care or non-urgent patient care, who is a healthcare staff, will drop everything and attend immediately to that patient. Yeah, unresponsive. No pulse. Continue CPR. So we may have to resuscitate the patient. We haven't had a code blue in this hospital yet, but we certainly had a couple of drills to keep ourselves on our edge. Second dose of IV adrenaline, one in 10,000, going in at one five, one two hours. Okay, there's a pulse. Okay, there's a pulse. Oh, the rhythm is sinus. We usually do this kind of code blue drill once a month. And I enjoy doing it is because every time we engage different staff into this code blue drill, and every time we do it, we will see the improvement in timing, in the staff coordination and staff communications. 
。OK， 嗨 ，Mr. 猪，你好，你好，来，我要把这张纸交给你哈、哦。OK， 因为呃，你你之前不是住院，然后医生好，医生有跟你讲发生什么事情吗？嗯，讲大概讲。啊，讲了哈，所以他们就跟你安排了要照那个肺部。嗯嗯。啊，跟你讲了，有有人这好像治不治不好啊，就是这个，比如我们中国人嘛，不是有两个好像缺了适应了吗？所以说，当时也有点害怕嘛，啊，后来医生给我治治疗，这个消退了，温度消退了，我当时就有点放心了。如果说我温度再往上高，那个就确实有点害怕嘛。所以说，温度降下来了，所以说我当时就放心。对我，我感觉到好像是个大医院一样啊，一样专业，没感觉到是它是像个小医院，没没有这感觉，就是我觉得很好，很专业。好，谢谢你啊、哦。很好，很好 ，Thank you 啊。I finish in the ward, so I'm going back to the office to do some staffing arrangement for tomorrow to ensure that there's enough staffing. After that, I'll be showering and go home, and I'll be watching a horror movie tonight because. Once you watch something horror, you just scream out, relax, and sleep. It's a bit surreal that I'm working quite a few Sundays nowadays, but uh, it's nothing that we haven't done before. Sometimes I will also call up my father, whom I'm very close to, and we will speak about our respective days and uh, just catch up as father and son. I was looking for some uh, dry yeast. I used it was uh, running out of stock for a couple of weeks, really, almost oh. more than a month. Okay, okay. I think everybody is uh, uh, one time grabbing up all the flour <laughs> and all that. You must be all baking at <laughs> so, home. Uh, yeah. I suppose so, uh, because of the uh, circuit breaker. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thanks, Daddy. Yeah, oh, so I'm Bye. reaching home then. already. Bye. So Bye. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. Baby, is that a chart? Yeah, let's get a rosé. For afternoon tea, are you joking? <laughs> oh, all right. Wow, nice snacks we made. Now pancakes. No, I just get water. Baby, put a pancake. Um. What's this? Wow, what's this? What's this? Mm, I don't know this. You don't know this? Are you sure? Oh, police call. Oh, you're yeah, the police call. Oh, hello, police. Oh, very good. Safina is making good progress. When I see my family, uh, all the tiredness of the day melts away because uh, the first thing I want to do is interact with my uh, daughter, uh, especially my elder one who is talking so much now. I just want to find out how her day is and play puzzles with her or just do silly things together with her. Me, 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 what yeah, you do go. you see? Yeah, yeah. I see who? Do you see me, me? You see your me, me? Smiling at? You roll your eyes. Can you smack it yourself? My wife has been a uh, pillar of support for me ever since, even before we were married, uh, and even now more so. Uh, some days, she would deliver food into the car for me to have at least uh, one or two nutritious meals a day. Mimi's also going broom, broom. Who's faster, Mimi or you? So initially, for the first few weeks of uh, my COVID journey, I moved away into another apartment to prevent my wife and kids from being affected by me in case I had a pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic carriage of the virus. Definitely, my two children were missing me. See? I see. Good morning. Mm. Oh, yeah. Anong kinain nyo? Breakfast na kayo? Anak man saan? Ising na? Oh. 
Ang gagawin niya mamaya? Titinda kayo ng ice cream mamaya? Oo. Oh, oh. Mamaya, magtitinda kami ice cream. Pukukas na ako ng, ano, ng tindahan. Kuya, to stay connected with my family, I always video call them before coming to work while I'm walking. Uwi ni mama. Now, I cannot go home. Even my children, they want to come here. They cannot come. So, it's it's really heartbreaking for me because I miss them. I really miss them, especially my children. May, May is my son's birthday. Every birthday of my children and my mom, my husband, I make sure that I go home. But because of this situation, I cannot go home. But I just tell to myself that I think it will end soon. I'm the only sole breadwinner. So that's why um, I've been here to support them financially. So it's not easy, but I am doing this for the future of my uh, children. Ma, must comply with your medicine so that your blood pressure is okay. Okay. Before and after you stop your toilet, ma'am, must comply with your medicine. Okay. Mr. Ho, ah. how are you? Okay. Okay, ah. no problem. No problem. Good, good, good. Okay. Thank you. I will hand over to you bed 67, Mr. Chu. So far, I went and checked on him. No chest pain, no breathlessness, all that. He's quite well. For nursing side, we just continue to monitor him. And thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, here? Yeah? I'm the mother of my ward. I always say that I'm not married, but I have 74 kids. We are very close with each other. Oh, right. Night shift. Night shift, oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Then let them get. Then after that, I will, I will let you all know the LNA topics that we are going to go through today. Huh? Okay, thank you. Lottie, 67, how's the update? Same sister, no bracelet. Okay, alert today. Comfortable. comfortable today. Huh? Okay, yes. good, good, good. Okay. Okay. What? My Ever since we have been converted to a COVID facility, the staff have to change into scrub suits before entering their ward for duty. So if they are to go out to buy food, they have to change back into their own civilian clothing. It's quite tedious for them to change in, change out. And it takes time for them to go and buy food. So what our kitchen did was they take initiative to start providing lunch and dinner for the staffs every day. And there are specials throughout the week, like Hokkien Mee, Fry Kway Teow, Carrot Cake, all this, which ever since COVID lockdown started, we don't get to eat. 看见他们把我们的食物用餐吃的表情，我感觉到很开心。有时他们也会写上些感谢的小字条，啊，就是会带呃会带带给我们更大的动力来呈现更好的食物。In Bright Vision, we have this joke among ourselves, we call ourselves Kampong Lapiri, you know, the little Kampong Hospital in uh, Lolong Lapiri. Uh, it's, it's a very tight-knit hospital, so we work as a team from the security officer right all the way up to the medical director. We feel ourselves as one team. The staff are one big family, 
and they treat patients like one within this big family. This is no different during the COVID pandemic. Two, yes, because uh, this one we want to increase a little bit so your blood pressure get better. Now your blood pressure is still a little bit high. A uh, little bit. This one also morning one. This one is morning one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Correct, correct. So all these three you must take. Huh? Yeah, so your blood pressure comes down. And finish. Huh? So this gentleman came to us with a new COVID uh, infection and then he had a hypertension or high blood pressure. During the day of admission, uh, he, his blood pressure is really high. So with the help of my doctor and myself, we reinforced to him the importance of complying on taking his medicine. Uh, you have the blood pressure, yeah? yeah. Can you show me the tablet? Uh, this one morning time, up. Morning time, up. It turns out is, um, that his blood pressure was poorly controlled because he did not think it important to take blood pressure lowering medications. Reason being that he said, I'm completely fine, and he had no symptoms. Your, your heart a bit no so good because high blood pressure. So he was much surprised to learn when I shared with him that the high blood pressure had already affected his heart, which was beginning to bloat up. So when he realised that it was affecting his organs, he resolved to actually take the blood pressure medications uh, more I mean, regularly. And we begin to see his blood pressure coming down from about 170 on average yesterday to 140 today. In the days to come, because he's taking the medicine so regularly and all of a sudden he goes from not being on any medicine to being on two to three different medications, we're going to have to monitor his blood pressure closely to make sure it doesn't go too low either. How are you today? Okay, so tomorrow you will do your own uh, dressing, right? Yes, right. Okay, so do you think it's simple? Uh, yes. So tomorrow we will test you. Okay, can. If you can do it properly, then maybe we can plan for your discharge. But tomorrow... If for one of our patients is due to be discharged soon. He's actually the one who came in with both COVID-19 and a bad leg wound that's not been healing very well because he's diabetic. We can't discharge him until we are confident that he can take care of the wound on his own. So our wound nurse has been teaching him how to change the dressing on his wound. What you do is wipe from here, wipe hard so that you remove all the things. Okay? Only don't touch the center part when you do like that, right? And let you apply yourself. You hold with your hand, put CPM. Tada. আমার পায়ের কোকল যত্ন নিতে না পারার কারণে যদি আমাকে এখানে আরো কয়েকদিন থাকতে হয় সেটা তো আমার জন্যই ভালো যেহেতু তারা আমার জন্য চিন্তা করতেছে তো এজন্য আমার মন খারাপের কিছু নাই আমি খুব খুশি যে তারা আমাকে আমার যত্ন এবং আমার পায়ের কোকল ঠিক না হওয়া পর্যন্ত আমাকে ছাড়বে না এটা শুনে আমার কাছে মন খারাপের কিছু নাই আমার শুনে খুব আনন্দিত আনন্দিত হই আমি আসলে এটা এটা নিয়ে তো চিন্তিত হওয়ারই কথা যদি So Bright Vision Hospital is a community hospital. We have the chronic sick unit. The patients are usually with us for many years. Some of them were here uh, since the opening of this hospital back in 2002. So when they were told that they have to move out because we were converting to a COVID-19 hospital, they were very sad, uh, but they underst understood the need and uh, very reluctantly they left. Just as the village doctor has a good relationship with his, uh, the villagers, uh, it is the same here too. He had a very close relationship with, with some of the patients. 
many of our patients were under hospice palliative care at the end of their lives before we moved them out of Bright Vision Hospital to convert it to a COVID facility. Since then, a number of them have passed away. To be honest, I view this as a sweet release from suffering for them. I'm glad that they're in a better place and actually I did tell some of them that I really hope I will see you in the next afterlife and we'll be friends too. Before COVID-19, this is the favourite place for the patients and the relatives to hang out. They will sit by the pond, enjoy the sound of the water, and they will look at the fish. It's a very tranquil and uh, therapeutic environment. And then uh, on Friday afternoons, we have a concert here uh, where they have uh, volunteers. Some of them are very good Thai singers. They will come and they have games to interact with the patients. And the whole place will be filled up with chairs all the way back. Now, I think we really miss the, the happy good old days. So one day when I did my uh, regular rounds around 10 a.m., I saw the patient like lying on the bed, no activities at all. So I feel it's not good for them. So I come with that idea about to have this kind of Zumba teledancing. Before, patient can uh, go out, then do some exercises out outside with the physiotherapist. They can do gardening outside the hospital, and they can do also majong. They have activities like that in the hospital. But now, COVID patient, uh, they only stay at the room. Most of the patient is a construction worker. So their body is used to work or do something. So the emotional stress about the, their condition is quite sad for us also. So we come up this uh, Zumba video exercise uh, in order to help them to lessen their stress, emotional stress, and also to make them uh, healthier. আমি ঠিকমতো এগুলো করতে পারি না এটা তো দেখে তো আমার নিজের কাছেও খুব খারাপ লাগে যে তো সবাই করতেছিল আমি করতে পারতেছি না তো তারপরেও আপনার নার্স আমাকে মনে সাহস দিচ্ছে না আপনি যেভাবে পারবেন সেভাবেই করেন কোনো সমস্যা নাই আপনি বসে পারেন যতটুকু পারেন ওইভাবেই করেন এতে কোনো সমস্যা নাই আর যেহেতু সবাই করতেছে আমি করতে পারতেছি না এটা আমার দেখে তো খুব খারাপ লাগছে this patient so far he has been with us for more than a month why he's still here is because he had a surgery done and we are waiting for the wound to recover so I think my wound nurse saw the patient and then they realized that there is a bit of slough um, on the wound itself, so that's why there's a delay of discharge. Huh? But currently, the wound is getting very small. So I'm going to see the patient now. I will see whether he can do his own dressing. Once he is competent, then we can plan the discharge for him. Okay, I'm going to the red zone now. Okay, so we will inform the doctor later and we will plan for your discharge. Okay, thank you. When I was able to get discharge, I was able to get a little bit of a discharge. I was able to get a little bit of a discharge. I was able to get a little bit of a 
এখানে সবকিছু মনে থাকবে বিশেষ করে চিকিৎসা ব্যবস্থা এবং তাদের আন্তরিকতা ডাক্তার নার্সদের আন্তরিকতাটাই সবচেয়ে মিসিং করব আমি বেশি time will come that many years down the road people will may forget the things that we go through we want to remember the patients because so we realize that the patients actually put in a lot to protect the community you know when they come to our hospital they are actually staying out of the community to protect the community so i think we need to show appreciation to the patients as well for cooperating with us and our staff were so impressed by them they are so cooperative you know they are anxious they are they are separated from their family but they also make the effort to make sure that they do not pass the infection or minimize passing the infection to our staff so the patients leave a thumbprint and write a message to remind ourselves and the future generations that everyone put in their part to keep the community safe the tree of resilience will celebrate resilience at the end of covid-19 it will also serve as a reminder to be vigilant for the next uh, the next crisis that may come to us মনে হচ্ছে যে আমি একটা নতুন জীবন পেয়েছি আমার কাছে খুব ভালো লাগছে এখন আমার ভিতরে খুব ফিলিং কাজ করতেছে যে আমি এখন পুরোপুরি সুস্থ তাদেরকে বলার কোনো ভাষা নাই যেহেতু যে মহামারীর পরিস্থিতিতে ডাক্তার নার্স যে ফ্রন্ট লাইনে যে তারা যে কাজ করতেছে এটা অবশ্যই প্রশংসনীয় তাদেরকে কোনো কিছু বলে বলার কোনো ভাষা নাই এবং তাদেরকে কোনো কিছু বলে তাদেরকে ছোট করার মতো ছোট করা মানে আমার বলার কোনো ভাষা নেই যে তারা যেভাবে কাজ করতেছে ফ্রন্ট লাইনে তাদেরকে ধন্যবাদ দিয়েও আমি তাদেরকে ছোট করতে চাই না তাদের প্রতি আমার আন্তরিক ভালোবাসা এবং সবসময় তাদের জন্য আমার দোয়া থাকে Being a nurse is not easy. There's a lot of challenges, but seeing my patient recovered, it's very meaningful. No amount of money can buy that. There's a lot of uncertainties about this uh, virus. The number is decreasing, but we are not so sure if there is a second wave. So I will still continue to support this until um, this pandemic outbreak ends. There are times where some of my staff might feel tired, even me, but as they pass by, I'm quite used to that and with my strong support from my family and my friends, I think I can still fight this battle for as long as it comes. I hope to travel again soon, but let us all fight this battle first. Where is your dormitory? Uh chest okay? No, uh, okay. Okay, it's good. We are a very small community hospital and we had the kampong spirit even before this going into covid and um if we had any issues on the ground it was difficult uh we would you know um the nursing sisters are just to buzz away or just a walk away there is no job description for a particular doctor to do this or a particular nurse to do this or a particular social worker to do this everybody just seamlessly works together to get what is to be done done uh you have the blood pressure yeah yeah okay, yeah everything 